Hello my dear students. Now this is the next part of my topic, the ecosystem. Now have, uh, in the first video I have explained you the component of ecosystem and there I have taken up the topic, the biotech component. Then in the second video I have explained you the food chain and food web and now I am going to explain you the abiotic component of the ecosystem. Now non-living things in the environment is called the abiotic component. Abiotic component includes air, water, soil and climatic factors such as sunlight, temperature, humidity and wind. Each of these has a specific influence on the life process of various organisms, right? So over here you can see the picture. What all are uh, these are all are the abiotic components like the rain, water, soil, wind and sunlight. They are all called the abiotic. Abiotic means the non-living component of the environment. Now let us take up each one of them individually. Now the first one, air or wind, whatever you call it. Now what is, you can see in this table, these, this is the component of air. Now what does it contain? The maximum amount of air contains 78% of nitrogen, then 20%, 20.9% oxygen. Other gases are 0.17%. Argon is less than 0.9%. 90% and carbon dioxide is 0.03%. Now all living organisms on earth need air to live. Green plants use carbon dioxide from the air to make food and give out oxygen. The, this oxygen is used by living organisms for the process of respiration. Now gas in the atmosphere are cycled. Thus there is a balance of gas in the air. Unfortunately Human beings are disturbing this balance by their activities like deforestation, excess burning of fossil fuel, cause an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The nitrogen present in the air is converted to nitrites in the soil by microorganisms. These nitrates are then used by the plants. Air help in regulating the temperature of the earth. It absorbs excess solar heat and does not let the days get too hot, right? It also prevents the heat of the earth to escape, thus protect, protecting us from freezing night. Okay, understood the importance of air? Now the next component is the water. Water is extremely important for all living organisms. All metabolic activities such as digestion, excretion, circulation occur with the help of water as a medium. Green plants need water to prepare food. Water is also the main constituent for all living organisms, right? The human body consists of around 60 to 70 percent of water by weight. So, see how much important water is for us. The amount of water and rainfall in the region affect the kind of plant and animal around the area. Now, for example, like uh, in desert, if you see, desert region have less water, right? There is scarcity of water. So they have less vegetation, whereas the Western Ghat and the Assam, you know, they have heavy rainfall. So they have dense forest. Water in rivers, lake and pond, ocean is also home for many living organisms, right? Fishes live in water, so it is the habitat for aquatic habitat, right? Aquatic animals live in water. Now the third one is soil. Now soil is the topmost layer of the earth crust, we all know. All life on earth depend on soil because it provides a medium for the growth of plant. Plants growing on land get water and minerals from the soil. Soil is also home to a variety of living organisms such as bacteria, fungi, worms and even insects. These organisms keep adding minerals and nutrients to the soil and they enrich it. The soil is also important for the growth of plants, right? And the next is climatic factor. Now the climatic factor, what does it include? It includes the sunlight, it includes temperature, humidity and wind. Right? Now sun is the primary source of light and energy on earth. We all know that. It affects plants and animals activity in a number of ways. Now you take an example. Green plant make the food in the presence of sunlight. Light influence the closing and opening of stomata, germination of seed and so many activities. Right? The amount of sunlight in a particular area has direct influence on the type of plant and animal found there. For example, the intensity of light also influences the behavior of animal. 
Now, most animals that you see around you are active during day, as they can tolerate bright light. They are called diurnal animals, right? So, who, the animals which are active during day are called diurnal and urinal animals, whereas the animals which are active at night are called nocturnal animals. Okay. Now, temperature also plays a major role. Living organism can generally survive at a temperature of zero to fifty degrees Celsius. Most of them have a range specific range of temperature in which they can live comfortably okay and in tropical region the temperature exceed 18 degrees celsius right so it supports the type of life over there the animal and plant found in that region can survive in that temperature and and wind is like wind is very important for us you can see you know it is also a climatic factor movement of air help in Pollination of flower, I have told you pollination, dispersal of seed and fruit, pulses and grain dry up fast with it when there is wind, evaporation of sweat is faster when the breeze is blowing, it makes you feel cooler. So, wind is also a very important factor. So, these are the various abiotic factors that influence our life, right? Now, uh, I'll be continuing this video, I'll be te teaching you the interdependence of organism in my next video so please do stay connected and if you like my video please do share subscribe to my channel and please hit the bell icon okay thank you so much